everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Miles and today we're going to be talking about how to tell if you're empathic. And what I mean by being empathic in this context is the ability to feel and sense other people's energy and emotions. Not to cognitively empathize with them, but to, but to actually feel it. Um, it's one of the most extraordinary things that we can do as people, this, this uh, empathic perception. It's very real, it's very common, and one of the ways... Well, I've got two quick tests that you can do on yourself to tell if you are indeed empathic. And the first of these is as simple as taking your pulse. You just take one of your arms, take your wrist, put the fingers of your opposite hand onto your wrist, and then feel for a pulse. I found mine. I can feel it. And if it's hard for you to palpate for a, a pulse on your wrist, some people find it easier to do it in the nape of their neck. So I can feel my pulse there too. So if you find your pulse, congratulations, you pass the test, you're empathic. The second of these tests is the breath test. And for the breath test, you just exhale completely and then you wait until you feel the kind of automatic urge to inhale again. Okay, it just happened. I had to inhale. And you don't want to... It's not a test. It's not a, a feat of endurance. You don't need to make yourself uncomfortable. You just exhale and then just wait for the impulse to inhale. I'm talking, so it's kind of just like naturally happening. There it is. I had to inhale. Or, I, I mean, it just happened. Um, so that's the second test. And if you exhale, you wait... And then you just feel that impulse to inhale, breathe in, and congratulations, you are empathic. Now, if you're wondering why I have these incredibly absurdly simple tests to tell if, if uh, we're empathic, it's kind of a joke. Well, it's obviously a joke because um, the, the, the punchline of the joke is that if you are a breathing, living human, with a pulse, then you're basically empathic. The only exceptions to that would be people with um, se serious conditions that might compromise their nervous system and um, their empathic sensitivity, and it would impact a bunch of other stuff as well. But for most people, being empathic is as innate as balancing. It's as innate as feeling emotions. It's just part of our experience. Um, it's something that a lot of us, certainly myself included, learned t to disassociate from for a variety of reasons. Generally, our empathic sensations and perceptions are quite vivid during childhood. Um, and then as we go through life, they have a, we have a tendency of disassociating from them. I don't think that those, um, the machinery of our empathic perceptions goes away, but we ignore it, and maybe, um, maybe our perception on that level can atrophy or become blunted. Um, but certain life experiences will bring our empathic perceptions roaring to the surface. Um, so all of this is to say that to be human, generally, for mo most of us, is to be empathic. It's not an exceptional thing. I mean, it's really fascinating and extraordinary, but it's quite universal, I think. Or it's incredibly, incredibly normal for, the human, for, for a human experience to include these empathic perceptions. And of course they occur in us on a spectrum. Some people are extremely connected to these vivid empathic perceptions that are very grounded and practical and tangible. And, um, and then others much less so. And it's just a spectrum. There's no better or worse. Um, and I think our empathic experiences manifest in a lot of different ways. We experience them in a lot of different ways. And... Given that, um, that it is something very common to all of our experiences, the question kind of shifts from 
am I empathic to how do I connect with this innate empathic perception that I have by virtue of being a person? And for me, the clearest path to reconnecting with my empathic perceptions has been through developing um, a simple kind of emotional awareness. And the easiest way that I can describe this is just giving an example, a case study. And um, in this case study, let us imagine that I'm at work. I'm in a workplace. I'm talking with a bunch of coworkers, feeling very loose and expanded and natural. And then um, another coworker shows up. She, um, she appears in, in, she comes into the room and immediately I have a very strong emotional and energetic response to her presence. I become tense. I become much quieter. My posture changes. My breathing changes. I feel very uncomfortable. I feel insecure, unnatural. And the question arises, am I just having an empathic response to her energy? Is she entering with um, an energy, an emotion that I'm picking up on and responding to uh, empathically? Like I'm absorbing her discomfort and becoming uncomfortable because I'm picking up on that. Um, Or... So is it just an empathic thing? Am, am I a sponge that's just soaking that up and it's, it's uh, altering my consciousness and behavior? Or is she just showing up and triggering some pre-existing emotional pattern inside of me, my emotional baggage, so to speak? And um, yeah, is what's happening not an empathic response at all, but just an emotional trigger being set off in me from her presence and whatever she represents. Um, That is a very common occurrence too. Both of these things are very common occurrences. And then there's a third alternative that out of probably infinite alternatives, but for the sake of this conversation, there's a third alternative possibility, which is that I'm experiencing some combination of column A and column B. There is an empathic thing happening where I'm picking up on her energy and emotion, but that's also being colored by my own emotional pattern, my own conditioning and projection. So the two things are kind of being commingled. That is extremely common. So all three of these things regularly happen to me, and the art of unraveling all of that teasing it apart and seeing, okay, these are all of my feelings. What's going on with these feelings? What are they communicating? And learning how to understand um, the difference between a raw empathic sensation uh, versus a completely um, self-generated emotional projection or an emotional triggering. And then also understanding when those two things kind of blend together. Um, Unraveling all of that and developing awareness around it is an incredibly high art. It's really fun. It's really extraordinary and beautiful. And, um, And it seems like maybe... For me, it feels kind of like a, a life, a life's work in a really positive way, not in a, not in a laborious, negative, disempowering way, but in a, in a humbling way. Um, once you dive into this, it becomes obvious that um, while one can get to know their perceptions and feelings very deeply and have it be this magical, empowering, enriching, vibrant um, process, the question of how much can I ever really tell what is me versus what's my environment? That's a big question. It's kind of this existential mystery. Um, can, can I ever com- really trust that I'm having a completely objective, naked experience of my environment? Um, it's it's uh 
is a good thing to maintain some humility around and some lightheartedness around as we approach this mystery of developing empathic awareness and emotional awareness. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to say about this vast subject today in this video. But to come back to the question that I uh, started this talk with, I personally do believe that we're basically, for the most part, all empathic. And learning the language of our empathic perceptions is this extraordinary journey. And uh, yeah, and I, and I explore it in a certain from different angles in kind of all of the videos and podcasts that I've been posting here, and certainly in my book, How to Open the Heart. Uh, that's just this long story that's uh, kind of a deep exploration of it. If you're interested in checking that out, you will find a link to it in, uh, in the description here. And um, yeah, if you're interested in this subject, stay tuned. Lots more to come on it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care.